Uh, I'm Jason and welcome to Technique of the Week. Um, today's episode we're going to be showing you, um, okay we've got this fire pit done, we got our patch done now, um, that was last week. Um, now um, we got to get color on the rest of this. So um, it's kind of, you know, there's always going to be some holes and stuff in, in, in the concrete and there's always going to be some spots that, you know, maybe where the two liners splice or, or whatever that we want to uh, kind of fix up and again that's a the awesome part about using color hardener is that you can come back the next day, the next week, the next year, and you can make this match every time with the top. So today we're going to be just showing you uh, an easy way to do that. To get it prepped for this, you know, a lot of times it makes a kind of a nasty edge on this. If you just take one of these um, rub bricks, normal rub brick, and you can kind of knock off the high spots. I'm just going to take this around here the whole way around and just kind of knock down any high spots that are on here. I've cleaned up all the edges. You can see if you if you run this rub brick on there, that just makes it nice a nice clean edge to to run the color hardener up against. The next step in this is just to take your primer, uh, your Surebond 100, and I'm gonna just brush that on here. And again, this is just a bonding agent. What this does, it just makes sure that we got a good good bond to the concrete. We don't need to put any of this mixed in with the color hardener. We just need it to um, bond it to. If you're trying to do this the same day, brush the color hardener on, you don't need the primer. Um, because the concrete itself, uh, it'll bond fine to it because it's still wet. But if anything over a day, we're just gonna brush this primer on there just to just to be safe. With this, we're gonna kinda wait till this is just a little bit tacky, but not, not completely dry. Um, so you don't wanna, if it's really hot out, you don't wanna get too much on there, you know, paint the whole thing. So I want it just a little bit, a little bit tacky, but not too wet either, so. Next thing I'm gonna do, these brushes are, are, are really nice for this. Find the, um, finest bristle brush you can find, like the nicest brush you can find to paint these steps. I like to do them with uh, a two inch for these noses, and we're gonna have two of them, okay? We're gonna have one, we're gonna have one to brush it on the init initially, and then we're gonna have one uh, that doesn't have any color hardener on it that we're just fi final brushing it. So I wanna wet this first. I've got my sifted color hardener here that I'm gonna paint. If you didn't see the sifted color hardener technique of the week, um, it's number nine. You can watch it right after this. You can go watch it and see how we get, get this mixture that we want for this. So the first thing I'm gonna do is just dip that in there, get some on there. I'm just gonna brush it along here, okay? And all I'm doing is filling all the holes in the voids, but I don't wanna put it on too thick where I lose the texture either. So I'm brushing it pretty, pretty tight to this. So if you kind of, and to get on the top edge here, if you kind of go at an angle like this, at a 45 degree angle, it keeps it off the top. Now we're ready to do our final brush and determining when to do the final brush on this is like very important that with the temperature. Like, like today it's overcast and it's not very uh, hot out. So we have a lot more time. I was able to go the whole way around here before I really have to start uh, doing the final brush on this. Now, if this was a 90 degree day, direct sunlight on this, I probably could only do like one of these sections and then I would have to go back with my finish brush. So my finish brush doesn't have any color hardener on it, okay? And I wanna just dip it just a little bit, just the tip of it in the water, and I'm gonna wring as much of this out as we can, as I can. I, wanna, I don't want a lot of water on my brush. So what this does is it takes the brush marks out from the first coat when you're brushing on, it kind of takes that out and it takes the, uh, um, that bigger sand off of it. The other thing I could do if it's, if it's a hot day and you need just a little bit of moisture, I can just lightly, damn it. You can lightly, lightly mist it with one of these trigger sprayers. And that kind of helps to give a little bit of moisture. You don't want too much though, because then it, what it does is it'll want to drag the sand more. So you just want it just a little bit so you can work with it a little bit, but not too much moisture on there. We use chocolate release on this patio. So that's what I'm going to use to antique this nose. And to do that, I'm going to take one of these cheap three inch roller frames with a, a 
three eighths and then snap on it. Um, I'm just gonna dip that in my release agent, okay? And then I'm just gonna lightly roll it on there. Just letting the, the weight of the tool do it. So what this does is it doesn't get the release on the spots that are back in, and it just gets it on the high spots. Well, that's how it's done. You know, didn't take very long. Um, sifted color hardener, brush on, rebrush, you know, um, roll the release on there. Easy, easy to do. Um, thanks for watching. Um, make sure you subscribe to www.techniqueoftheweek.org. So go on there and subscribe, and we'll send you these uh, every week in your inbox. Uh, thanks for watching. Really appreciate it. Have a good rest of the weekend.